You sure? Take 10. You ready? All right, here we go. Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We're on take 10 of the Kia. Just trying to get a little intro done. Ain't working. Uh, you can see the lovely Mrs. O up there inside this Kia that has been dropped off with an intermittent no crank, which is ultimately a no start. And to me, it sounded like it needed a starter. Click, click, click. Pretty, uh, pretty common sound. You know, battery's good. Headlights are nice and bright. Hit the key. Wank. You hear the starter. Uh, solenoid engage, and that's it. The lady did state, though, if she holds the key in the start position for a few seconds, it'll usually crank over, and you know, away you go. But it's getting to be a little bit longer uh, time in between holding the key and when it actually starts. So, uh, before I made the call on the starter, I wanted to do a quick check. But in this case, it doesn't need a starter, and I want to show you the purpose of taking a few minutes, grabbing a scope on the rope, and doing some testing. We did it. We got the intro. So far. Ooh. Step two. We're using the new scope on the rope 2.0, made by a viewer, made my dream, vice grips for the ground wire on a test light. So I put a 780 milliamp test light bulb in it, and here is our starter in Kia. You have to take the friggin' exhaust pipe loose to get the heat shield off. Awesome design. So on the back of our starter there, you can see where I've got that little rubber cap pulled off. Now that's our battery cable coming down to the starter. You've got the smaller wire there that runs the solenoid. When you turn the key, all the criteria is met to engage the starter. You know, that little wire becomes hot with 12 volts, engages the solenoid, solenoid closes. Batteries pass from the battery cable down to the starter motor. So, pretty standard. So, first thing first, now I have to hold the camera, which I usually hate doing, but there's no other way to get up in here. Let's see here. First thing first, we're gonna go right on the battery. And you can see the test light lights up nice and brightly. Now I'm on, uh, let's see here. I gotta take, dim this down so everybody can see. We're gonna go right on that nut of the starter. And you can see, hopefully you guys can see that the tip of my test light is right on the nut. Um, okay, go ahead and try to crank it there, Mrs. O. You want me to bump it? Yeah, just bump it. There was a little tube. Look what happens to our test light. Do it again. And then we're gonna stick the test light right on the stud of the starter solenoid. Then bump the key again. Okay, bump it again. Again. Well, what do you know? So typically when we're down here testing starters, you're just going to come up to the smaller wire here. I don't know if I can get to the metal on that. Now when Mrs. O hits the key, this should light up. That's the signal wire. Okay, just hold it. Let off. And you can see when she holds it, the signal to the solenoid stays active. However, we lose our battery voltage at the actual starter solenoid stud. Bump it again. Yeah, you see that? Now I thought I seen some sparks up here. Go ahead and hold it in the crank position. If it starts, so shut it off. So did you guys see that? Now just for uh, poop and laughter there, bump it again there, Mrs. O. Okay, just a second. I'll let you guys see what... Enhance, enhance. Do it again. Ooh, looky, looky. Do that again. All right, so you guys see that. In this case, what seems to be or sounds like just a starter, I would have been wrong because this thing just has a crappy connection. I can't believe that your worst fear of being on the lift is that the airbag will go off if the car falls. It seems kind of scary. You don't even care that I would be the one under the car when you're the car falls. Under the car. You hurt my feelings. Well, you're not dead. Right in my feels. Oh, I gotta stop the lift. So first thing first, I wanna unhook the battery. Yes, I'm unhooking the positive. Wow. Big deal. Just don't be a dummy. Don't touch your wrench to anything metal. Sheesh. What I'm supposed to tell you is always unhook the negative battery. Terminal first, which general positive would just be easier for me to get to. So I want to take and unhook the battery cable from the starter. So I can 
got it, little guy. I'd show you, but it's kind of snug up in here, and I don't feel like taking a whole bunch of crap off this car just to do a simple job. Now, this thing's been on here sizzling, so hopefully it didn't melt where the stud goes into the solenoid. Be pretty snug. That's my fear. Once you get, uh, you know, high resistance like that, you always get the heat to follow. Get the heat that's always accompanied with it. Oh, I'm afraid that's not going to end well. No way to get up in here and hold this sucker. I'm going to try to turn it off at the same time. without unhooking the battery unless you got somebody recording it there it is look at that we won victory is ours so there we are I was able to clean up the not clean up the wire end reinstall it on a starter and I give her a little two to some fluid film there So there it is, all put back together. Like I said, it has this huge, you know, metal guard that goes over it. So you can't test anything without taking that off. Of course, you gotta pull the exhaust down there a little bit to get that out. But I'd say we're good to go now. I didn't even check it, but we should be, we should be good. We know what the problem was because we tested it. Folks, now I know this was silly to probably most of you, but I guess the thing to get out of it is, you know, just because it sounds like something's wrong, even, you know, to, you know, a trained ear, I guess, if you can call my ear trained, you know, when a car first did, I'm like, oh, you know, it needs a starter, you know, pretty plain and simple, but I can't just bring myself to go order one, particularly because I was going to get an OEM one for this because of problems we've had in the past with Kia Hyundai aftermarket starters. So I was like, ah, you know gonna have to test it you know I'm busy I got a Honda Civic over there I'm doing all the brake lines on right now you know I had to fix the lady's tire in the meantime and you know ding dong ding dong the bell and the phone's ringing and this and that but you have to take the time to test it even on something that's a pain in the butt like this you know you pull exhaust pull the guard off you know even though you know it's a starter you know it's gonna be a starter um, take a minute test it you know here we are the lady just saved 300 and some dollars and you save the aggravation of changing a starter so uh, it only takes a minute you know voltage drop testing you know they always preach it you know voltage drop voltage drop you know gotta do your voltage drop most of us don't um, you know in this case you know this is a perfect example as to why we should in this case I used a test light pretty extreme case you know our voltage was dropping down to the point it couldn't even carry you know 200 milliamps through the through the test light or 700 um, but in some cases, you know, you get a car, that has got that slow crank, you know, your voltage drop, if you're dropping, you know, one or two volts there, you know, you're going to see it and, you know, you can fix the cruddy connection. This was a pretty extreme case. Um, will that solenoid last a long time after being exposed to all that heat? I don't know, you know, time will tell, but you know, we fixed the problem that we could see and everything seemed to clean up and tighten up nice. So I'm not uh, too concerned about it at this point. Any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, put them in the comment box below. And while you're down there, click that subscription button and the notification bell. Find us on our socials, which aren't many, but Google Plus, Facebook, and Patreon. Uh, find us there. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.